Welcome back to Muse's Challenge. This is challenge number 10. I didn't know I'd be allowed to do this one, but it's let me go for far too long already. With me today, I have somebody you might recognize from some of our games, or all of them. It's Ashlyn Theaf, who is playing Lilith Rendell in Murderous Muses. Hi Ashlyn, thanks for coming. It's a pleasure, I'm so delighted to be here. How are you, you okay? You feeling good, feeling ready for the run? I am. So I'm jet lagged and I'm dyspraxic. So I feel like this is going to be an extra level of challenge, that, but I'm ready for it. It's, it could only get better if you couldn't see the screen. It would. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just going to, uh, before, we, before we head into the gallery, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a few things. Um, firstly, what have you been working on since we, uh, since we did this? Anything exciting? So a whole load of different things. I did a feature film earlier this year, oh, earlier last year, um, where I played a political journalist and the feature's called The Whip and it's an incredible script. Uh, I also work on another feature called Warhol, which is coming out later this year. And that's by the makers of my horror film, Lair. And that's beautifully shot and featuring some very familiar faces. Oh, wow. Um, so do keep an eye out for that one. Um, and obviously, Murderous oh, Muses. Murder <laughs> Warhol, is that based on the artist or? Uh, kind of, so it's based on a quote from Andy Warhol. I think the quote is, everyone gets their 15 minutes. And it's all about the concept of what people will do for an audience. Um, and it centers around this shock jock journalist, this radio host who, his career is in tatters. And this is kind of his last chance to, to make an impact. And he's not necessarily going about it in the best way. <laughs> it joins together three beautiful narratives all about making an impact on the world and not necessarily in the, the right way. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Sounds good. It's, it's yeah. Gorgeous. Is it, it's absolutely is it kind of horror genre again or thriller? Or... No, this is a drama. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a... I guess you could call it a horror in the life of a man, but it's <laughs> it's not really horror genre. It's it's drama. It's about life. It's great. What's your favourite genre to um, act in? All of them. You know, I, don't, I think all, yeah, I, I would say all of them. I, I don't know. I think I'm always drawn more to characters than I am to genres. And I, I've ended up doing a lot of horror, which I love. Like, horror yeah. is brilliant. But I, I'm i drawn more to complex characters. And I think you tend to find complex female characters in horror the most. Um, but I'm starting to see them more, especially in my age range in drama as well at the moment, which is really nice. Is there still any killing young women in horror, is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, effectively. Well, no, I think, I think the horror is, is weirdly one of the more progressive genres. I think we yeah. see more imperfect women in horror. Um, yeah. Women are allowed to be imperfect in horror um, in a way that they're not in other genres. And I think that's why I'm so drawn yeah. to it. Um, I, I love playing characters that aren't necessarily your girl next door, lovable character. You know, I like I, I, my roles in, in the Tobeki project is kind of way to show that. What are you saying about but... Mariana? So just... <laughs> <laughs> well, Mariana's a dream. <laughs> exactly, everyone's dream date. I mean, people have been asking for us to do a dating thing with all our characters. I think that would go horribly wrong, to be honest. But... All I can think about that is, if you want to date any of the characters that we have played, you really need therapy. <laughs> and also, it's like, at the end, it's not do you end up with them, it's do you end up dead? So, there's, because they're basically yeah. all murderers, most of them. So that would be the win condition. Oh. You've made it through the date, they didn't kill you. <laughs> exactly. Double win, unlock the trophy. Um, talking to those characters, yeah, we did say before, because um, this is um, your third character for us now. Is there anything that you like in particular about you know like a trait or something from those three characters what was a anything cool that you can remember being able to portray for mariana or um uh lilith or violet i i think with all of them the duplicity is is my favorite thing i i love being able to find moments of engaging warmth in characters but also being able to go down the other end of the spectrum and find authentic reasons for them to be more unhinged, more violent, or capable of doing terrible things. Um, and to me, I think, I, I feel like I've succeeded in portraying a character when, to an extent, you 
can watch them and go, oh, I kind of get why they did that. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, but I, I think with Mariana, the joy of Mariana was that she, and the thing that I think so few people got, and the ones who did, like, absolutely nailed it, which was Mariana is a character that on paper is like this sex symbol. She's super ingenue and, you know, feminine and manic pixie dream girl. But S the reality Sorry. is, she is, <laughs> yeah, but she's like, she's incredibly damaged and she's actually incredibly vulnerable yeah. and anyone who went down that timeline of wanting to date her and pursuing her romantically ended up dealing with some pretty horrific stuff yeah. Yeah. Um, and I kind of love that because I'm like yes you're playing a doctor you shouldn't want to date your very disturbed very vulnerable patient. <laughs> so that, that, that gave me a real kick. <laughs> yeah, why are you here? What, yeah, you should, yeah, yeah, why is the player here? Why are you? Why, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or well, were they even there? I don't know. I think you had a line about them maybe being at their house or something. Yeah, and it was, yeah. And they were like, no, I never did that. This is possibly, I don't know, this might be coming out after the release anyway. So we can talk a bit about, just quickly about Lilith. She's got some interesting interesting takes or realistic takes on environmental issues shall we say or, or, or things like that did you could you relate to any of her storyline yeah absolutely <laughs> I, I it's one of the things that really drew me to Lilith was the fact that she is she really is in it kind of for the right reasons like what she does is not always something that people are going to find palatable, shall we say. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but I think I, I can see where she's coming from. And I, I think existing in this world where we do have so many environmental concerns and we're doing things like pumping human bodies full of carcinogens and then putting them in polished caskets that cost thousands and thousands of pounds and then putting that in the earth where the chemicals leach out yeah. like oh I, I actually did a film a few years ago where I uh, had to lay in a coffin that had been specially made for me okay. uh, in an actual funeral home did you get home. to keep it as well as props you could take <laughs> No, no, they sold it as lightly used. No, uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're dead, I guess, so, yeah. I mean, this, and, yeah. It was, and it wasn't environmentally friendly, it was a wicker coffin, so it was one that would buy a oh, okay, to grade nice. properly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but having having gone to my fair share of funerals, it's something that always occurs to me, like, why, why do we do this? Why do we get rid of our bodies in a way that impacts the environment so much so what Lilith is saying might not be the right way of doing it but yeah it's a, it's a way <laughs> yeah and uh, and lab grown meat ethical yeah I mean they, they've done They're that haven't it already, they it's, it's expensive it's, but... it's, it's, yeah it's it, I I don't know I mean I I don't know enough about lab grown meat no. to yeah. to really have a good opinion on it I, I think the difficulty with anything lab grown is that often when we process things and we make things yeah. ourselves there is a there's often a biological impact yeah, yeah. on the earth whether that's runoff whether that's you know carcinogens that whether that's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah well this is the thing yeah. you know so i i mean i don't eat a huge amount of meat but when i do i always make sure it's definitely as possible, you know, free range, organic. Yeah, yeah. I try to buy local. I try not to eat meat as often as you know, even once or twice a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the idea of lab grown meat, whilst I understand it, I'm also a bit like, oh, I feel like there might be an evil genius behind <laughs> this <with> me. <laughs> and well, I mean, she also mentions celebrity lab grown meat. I mean, do you think that's that's going a bit too far? I mean, I've, I've never thought to myself, God, I'd love to know what scar Scarlett you have. <laughs> Can I have a Scarlett burger, please? Like, a Joe like, burger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll be really Scarlett. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like the common it's, person, it's never... you are what you eat, right? So you just... Yeah. I mean, we... this is the thing. And also, then you start going, well, how much permission do they have to use oh, those genetics? As much as they have appearing in adverts now. Oh, don't, that really upsets me. Oh, I hate that. I really, that, you know that Audrey Hepburn advert for, it's a chocolate bar, I think. Yeah. Oh, I, so, I think that's so awful. It's, 
it, it's all AI, isn't it? But it's just going to be everyone's going to be deep faked. What are you? Be, what will you be advertising next week without knowing? <laughs> I just think <laughs> you need to get copyright done on the face. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's brilliant. Well, I better um, get get you into the gallery quickly, or you'll be asleep before we finish here. <laughs> that's great, though. Cool. Thanks for that. That's um, what we're gonna we're gonna shrink us down here. Um, this is the seed we're playing today. You can, if you've got the game, you can type the seed in. You get the same gallery Ashton's playing. This is a developer build, which means we've uh, messed with it a bit, taken out all the videos and a lot of the good stuff. I'm going to say that it pretty much looks like it does in here anyway, but <laughs> just just to pretend there's other stuff that you're missing. Okay, should we go in? Ready mm -hmm. to go? Oh, and Ashton's got a Murderous Muses mug. I didn't, yeah. I do. Uh, it's a trophy. I'm very organised. You got those on set, didn't you? That's good. I yeah. did. I love them. Okay, let's go in and see what we can find. There we go. Right. This is the uh, the day gallery that you're seeing at the moment. It's pretty bare because the walls haven't got all the paintings on yet. They've got some of the paintings. Um, you can see one here. It's very descriptive. <laughs> Her. <laughs> and I'll just show you the main gallery. Since you're on the, the muses, um, you've got a little bit of audio here. All the muses paintings are in the main gallery. There's also a, a few other landmarks there for you. Hey! Here's Lilith. Do you remember taking that picture? I do, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the kind of thing we'd have photoshopped afterwards, right? But yeah, everyone had to pose. I know. OK, let's have a listen, uh, see what Jamie says about Lilith. As the last remaining funeral director on the island, Lilith Rendell ferries Merlehaven's souls to their final destination. <laughs> Angel to the bereaved, she comforts those left behind, whilst pioneering carbon-neutral cremations and burials using compostable coffins. Are you are you coughing to death, or are you just are you you're disagreeing? <laughs> no, no, I think that was it. I think it was the the beautiful dulcet tones nearly just had me dying. Oh, I was Arna. nearly Lilith's next client. Yeah, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> you were coughing when she said coffin. So <laughs> that's that saying, isn't it? It's not it's not the cough that carries you off. It's the coffin they carry you off in. That's what I'm saying. What I what I love about this is that it reminds me so much of the kind of early 2000s games I used to play, like the early Lara Croft games and stuff like that. It's so gorgeous. We, um, I mean, when we started out, and we still have plans for this, is to release the game in VR. And so we kept things kind of as, not as small as possible, but in terms of resolution and the amount of polygons and things and all that, we kept them quite small so that it'd be easier to um I just have to sit down now. So it'd be easier to kind of port it later to, to VR, the VR headset. But cool. it also does give off that kind of dodgy nineties vibe, maybe early two thousands, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which fits kind of with the with the whole thing as well. And when you hear Higgins later you'll 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 get that. So Oh amazing. Uh we we'll probably need to go down there. What I'm gonna do I've got a letter for you as well for you to read. If Ooh, you can okay. see it hopefully. Two time tasks are complete. For the first task, you'll need to choose a crate, examine the painting inside it, then hang that painting over its matching title plaque in the gallery. Your time starts when the crate is opened and it finishes once the gallery button is pressed next to the correct plaque. Have a look around first to get your bearings. Thank you, Sasha. Okay, yep. cool. Okay. Right. So. So let's go, let's do this. So we're looking for crates in the gallery there's okay. no there's no places to hang paintings out here there's a couple of crates but you should probably pick one in one of these three four rooms i'm about to show you yeah let's go for that one before you do that <laughs> i'm just gonna t uh, we oh. just have a quick tour of the gallery so you can try and remember where these plaques are because when we open the box you're just gonna see a painting that, let me take this one off the wall okay. it's gonna look like that and it's not going to tell you what it is. It's Gray's Law number 24, A Mysterious oh, Woman. Okay. So you won't know. It won't tell you what the name is. You've got to work out by looking at it. Okay, yeah? cool. Yep. Okay, so the future. There's, right. there's 24 of these. So get that eye oh, okay, memory going. That Honestly, <laughs> what, my, 
What most people do, it's some people have written them down and then it's gone horribly wrong anyway. And then well, I'm gonna I'm gonna write them down right. because I well I think I probably have ADHD, but the waiting list near me are three years long. So that's the future. Okay. Got that one. Okay. Cool. Doorway. That's in reception. Both those rooms. Uh, both those plaques are in reception. Oh, uh, uh, what? We're in reception now. So if, oh, reception. if you get a painting and you think it's the future or doorway, just tell me to go to reception. Because you need to tell oh, me where no. to go, right? Cool. In the, okay. <laughs> only in the game, yeah. not... <laughs> What's this room called? This is just the corridor. Corridor? Yeah. And we've got... The hunt? Oh. Uh, Relative, maybe. Okay, we're out the corridor into the um, statue room. We don't have that anymore. But we call it the statue okay. room. I know what it is. Or the ballroom. Yeah. It's got sure. a giant crystal ball in it. Flock of starling. So where are we now? What did you we say? We call the... it the ballroom. The ballroom. Yeah. It's got a giant crystal ball in it. Uh, flock of starlings. Oh, do, have you seen that horror film, The uh, Murmur, The Murmuring? No, but... Oh, it's not a horror film. It's an episode of um, Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, uh, no, no. But Murmuring is... Uh, Linda was talking about that. It's basically Linda come up with the, all the Starman stuff from that over, yeah. Oh, I love it. It's a beautiful film. Linda would uh, love it. I mean, it's, it's an episode, but it comes off more like a film. That whole series is just joyful. Yes. Um, okay, cool. So we've got those. Flock of Starlings and Mulhaven Island. Mulhaven Island, okay. Chalk Cellars. Just in the ballroom. Yeah. Okay, and now, right, so corridor out of the ballroom, turn right. This was originally the lo uh, local artist's room, but they're okay. all now, um, they're all now Mordecai's works. So is this still the local this artist is the, room? Is that this one? is the local artist room I just moved into, yeah. So I've gone into the ballroom. It's right into the local artist room there, yeah. Okay, so we've got Aurora Some Woods. Woods. <laughs> Revenge. Henge. Revenge Henge. These all spawn um, randomly in different places. Oh, nice. Burial grounds. Beautiful. Okay. And I noticed that there's... There is a the lighthouse. A, uh, the lighthouse, yeah. And there's also a a crate here that looks like it might be exciting to pick early. Nice. Okay. Um, there's also one in the corridor, crate wise. And then this is the last room through the door here. This would be um, the art, the uh, Mordecai's room. Uh, it's left out of the uh, ball room there. Picture of Mulhaven. Oh, oh. Also in your story. Of Mulhaven. Of Loop. Marie's Farm. Okay. Da -da -da spirits. Saviour Spell. Yep. Got all those. And Scrying. Yep. Scrying, cool. You're all good now. Yeah, all you good. You got them all. Caught up. Yes. So we've got a crate in the local artist room there. Let's, yeah, let's do that or one. One in the let's corridor. The, no, let's open the crate in the local artist room. This one. Okay, yeah. well, Linda's going to do a bit of uh, timing to my, to my left here. We'll put it in, in post afterwards to get the accurate figure just in case. Are you ready? I don't know. Let's <laughs> see. As, as, okay. as soon as we go, as soon as, as, okay. soon as I click it, we start. Okay. Time okay. starts, yeah? Ready to go? Go. Oh, Grace Law, a worried looking boar. Um, the hunt. Where's that? Put it in the hunt, in the corridor. Well, well done. Oh, I'm not supposed to run. I ran, I ran, I ran. <laughs> run, run, come on, run. You done? There we go. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, that could be the fastest time. Around 12, 13 seconds. I don't know for sure, but... Because you ran. Because I ran. It's be a steward's inquiry afterwards, obviously, but... Oh, well, clearly. To be fair, you wrote them all down. You took the names of the places as well, and you, you told me to go straight away. So, it's, yeah, it's good. <laughs> 
took direction well. That was there you me. go. <laughs> that was me. Classic actor. Okay. <laughs> um, let's have a listen to the hunt, shall we? Yes. No, I'll fade off this one. Native to Merle Haven, the wild boar is generally harmless, though sometimes still hunted for sport. It's a frowned upon activity that the Triumvirate continuously consider banning, and Grey was against the hunt too. His painting aimed to bring more eyes onto their plight. There we go. The hunt. Fair. Yeah. You've actually, you've completed task one. Yeah, I know. It's done. We can now so skillful. We can run oh up here God. and get into the night time okay. now. So remember what you just said about the hunt there? Yeah. We're going to hear Higgins' version of that. Every painting in the gallery has got a different flip side to it. Amazing. too. Don't you? That's Higgins. Let's see what Higgins has got to say about the hunt. Every year, on the night before Halloween, the Triumvirate organises a secret boar hunt as a peace tribute to the incoming wave of spirits. They will never ban Bloody boar hit. hunting unless it looks like they might run out of boars. They won't ban hunting? Wow. <laughs> what, wow. What do they sound like? No, it's the drum run, so, yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Anti-hunting until it suits them. Yeah. So, yeah, every one of those paintings has got a different, different voice there at night. You've got a new note. To have a look at. Oh, wow. Okay, Ready? cool. Yep. Hi, Ashlyn. Welcome to the Night Gallery. For your final task, you'll need to solve the coin flip puzzle in the gallery that has spawned next door. Be sure to devise a good system with Tim to identify each coin. Your time starts when you click the button under the puzzle coins and stops once you've solved the puzzle. So what's... Okay, cool. The coin flip puzzle. How does that work? I'm going to show you that out here in a minute. Um, before I do that, for everybody that's done this, They've had the chance to question one muse, one question in the main gallery that we're heading into. It's where the coin puzzles anyway. So you get to pick any of the suspects there, including yourself, if you want, and ask them one question. So are there any of these muses or yourself that you fancy asking a question to just to show off the uh, the muses of the gallery? Oh, so got... Let's go <laughs> got... with... Uh, the twins. The twins. Yeah. Okay. We will take those out now. We've got a new corridor here. Do you remember there used to be a ga gallery here before? Oh, ah. there you go. Thanks for changing in Melhaven. Now we're going to get a bit of a clue about this particular um, seeds murderer. But we're not going to do that today because we're just doing our own thing. So that's been cancelled. Um <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the this is one of the uh, random night galleries we can get in here. Um, do you remember doing these? Oh yeah, gosh. Yes, your police interview up there. If you ask all these questions in that order, the, the people can unlock your police interview. Um, Amazing. We've got the twins, and to ask them a question, we need to hang them on one of these plaques. So we can ask them about any of those, and you can see just behind there's another. Six over there that I'll show you as well. So you've got All Hallows Eve, Fans, Passion, Family Portrait, Mordecai, or here we've got Spirits, Ambition, Criminal Job, Negligent, Home. And it, and those keywords sound exciting. Let's go with negligent. Negligent, okay. Just because I really love that word. <laughs> it could just be, um, I think it's just Sundown around. Let's have a look. You ready? Yep. Yeah. The surrogate didn't take the same care with Monday as Mother did with me. We were treated equally from the moment we were born, but these things do make a difference, you know. Nature versus nurture. It doesn't seem to affect her on the court, though, so I suppose that's what counts. Mm. Interesting. Mm, twins raised differently. Mm, curious. We've actually we've been doing psychology, GCC psychology, and um, they do twin studies and things to try and work out nature and nurture. It's one of the main things they do. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you know, see whether being in the same environment affects you in certain ways and all this stuff. Uh, I'm not saying Blimey. I'm not saying that happened. It's quite dark. Yeah, I'm not saying that happened to them, but 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 it might have. It might have done. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Well done. Um, let's have a look at this coin puzzle, shall we? Yes. Okay. 
Oh, is this like a matchy matchy one? It is a matchy matchy one. Oh, yeah. So yes, the, okay. we've got five by five coins, 25 coins all in all. Um, all you need to do is give me a good way of picking these out. I've had things like, you know, first row, second, third, fourth coin, second row. Th yeah, that, that would be good. Okay. Something like that. Cool. Okay, um, cool. I can show you. We'll go. I can... If we go first row. Yeah, okay, <clears throat> cool. So I'll go top to bottom, first row, second row, okay. third row, fourth row, fifth row. And then the like first button or second button will be the next one along. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. get it. I'm, I'm get, you know. Oh, you've gone quiet. Have I? Ah, there we go. Yeah. You're back. Okay. So, so as soon as I hit the button, the time will start, and then some of those coins will spin around. They will then hang there for three or four seconds for you to try and remember where they are, and then they okay. all go back. And then we flip some of them around. We won't know if we flip the wrong one around until we press the button again and submit our answer. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to see it yeah. go once? Yeah. I can do it. I can show you it, and we can fail it just so you can see how long you've got. No, come on. Where's the drama? Okay, you can that? go straight Let's in. Let's do this. Okay, yeah. some of them are much harder than others. So if you get one okay. and like half the block turns over, and you say, "Nah," we can just hit the button and get a new one. But the time keeps going, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I have it, but if I don't, then it's fine. I'll just fail. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think Reaper took a picture. By like turn three or four. Okay. Um, <laughs> Don't do that now. That'd be really rude. Okay. Give it one go, eh? <laughs> Let's give it a try. Okay. I'll try and come back here so you can see the see the coins. You ready to go? One second. One second. One second. I'm just screen capping I feel this. Like I've got like a, <laughs> a, a technique. I'm going to try, okay. but it might go wrong. Okay. Yeah. I'll try and come back to this view the whole time. It's easier when you do it yourself. I think it is. Yeah. Because you can physically remember this, you know, where they were, the spaces, if you're the same distance apart all the time. Okay. Ready? Yeah. And go. It's quite a lot of coins. Oh, they, right. They all look the same to me. Okay. Um, okay. So top row, second and third. Um, third row first. Okay, so those are the three that I knew. <laughs> Should we get another one? That, yeah. yeah, let's go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, okay, okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Pick the stragglers first. Okay, so first row. Yeah. First. Yeah. Third fourth and fifth then bottom row oh this is tricky um second third <laughs> uh, let's go with first first as well yeah you've definitely flipped <gasps> some coins Okay, um, and and uh, third row. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay, fourth row. Fourth. Wait, did I do it? No. Is that all of them? That's not all of no, them. No, no, no. no, no. Okay. You can flip any coin. It doesn't care until you submit it. Okay, okay. So you, um, do you want to sub that as an answer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, oh my gosh. One minute 40. Oh. You're one minute 40. I'm not sure where that puts you on the leaderboard. I'm not sure it's top. It's not, it's definitely. Oh, what? It's, How is that not It's top? definitely not bottom. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so proud of that. You did I good. You did so it. I'm so proud. I'm, I didn't think that was going to work. In my head, there was something in the second row. But yeah, you managed to get that. So, so the first time I tried it, I'll show you my workings out. First time I access. tried it, I tried to be really scientific oh, and I made, I don't know if you can see this, but I made like a little chart and that, that did not work for me. <laughs> that was not, no. that was too scientific. So the second time I literally just drew squiggles yeah, yeah. randomly, completely randomly without looking at the page. That's, that is autonomic writing. That's, yeah, that's basic. That's, I feel like I feel like that's more like underlying ADHD symptoms where 
it's mess to everyone else, but you remember where stuff is, kind of. That's, it's called automatic writing, autonom autonomous writing. I don't know, when, you, when you're not looking and you're just putting this pattern down, you look at it and you've done something wow. amazing, so. Yeah, I mean, that's never what I do. That, that this time it's one. But... <laughs> it's definitely worked. It's good, yeah. Excellent. You've got the key, you've done the puzzle. I'm just going to oh, unlock the door for you. You can have a quick look in here. Yes. In the treasure room, oh, you get there's... you get free play What's... spaces. That's... Amazing. Do you want to have a quick look at you? Yes. All right. People can't just be happy anymore, can they? There's no zen. Enjoying just being. I wish there was some way I could just speed up the grieving process. Well, cheery. <laughs> so cheery. <laughs> I it's like good. I I look at that nose ring and I can remember how sore that was. That was such an uncomfortable and it's one of those things that I put on myself. That was a... You didn't even ask no, me to do that. I was just like no, we didn't. she wears a nose ring. <laughs> so everyone thinks that's a proper piercing, right? That's the story. Yeah, obviously, I have my nose yeah. pierced, especially. That's why it hurt. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty, oh, yeah. yeah. Obviously. Still healing that day. <laughs> and we get a phone from Liv as well, um, nice. which I will skip for this one. And you also win, uh, you also win one of these vases, which we... Um... Oh, my gosh. Now, this, these are one of the amazing mm. vases your daughter designed, aren't they? They're one, yeah, we designed them together. This one isn't so amazing, so it's designed by me. That's how you know. This one's not one of the better ones. It's, I like uh, it. Yeah, I mean, Rachel's done some really good hand-drawn. Uh, they're all drawn in um, Procreate. Everything. So we exported Amazing. them and then hand-painted them. That one was hand-painted in, Procre in uh, Procreate. It's just, um, it's got this setting on to do with, um, it's like a 3D setting, which mm. makes those little round nodules come up, like they're tactile. But yeah, it was actually originally there is a gold pattern underneath there, but yeah, it's not that exciting, but... I buy that it's gold. You buy that it's gold. <laughs> yeah, good. totally. Excellent. Well, that's you've done the second part. It's just one bit to go. Oh, we'll, oh my gosh, we can, okay. We can sprint out of the gallery now. I honestly didn't expect this to go so well. I'm has... very, very smug right now. <laughs> you did good. Okay, we've got one more, one more message to read. Oh, come on, woman, you've left it on the floor. <laughs> okay, this is the end of your journey, Doc. When you're ready to leave, sound the bell and everything will disappear, Kira. Okay, yeah, okay. Classic, classic horror. All right, where's the bell? Where is the bell? Um, can you see it? Oh, yeah, in the distance. Okay, yeah. cool. There's the bell. There's the bell. Um, we're done. You've done really well. We're done. Yeah, as soon as I hit the bell, that's it. We really will disappear. It'll be the end of this episode. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Is there anything? Um, well, we've done the promotion bit. I think it's just we just swept the board, done it pretty quick, and we're out of there. I am. I am so proud, honestly. <laughs> I mean, you know, for someone, I am kind of famously terrible at video games. The only video <laughs> game I am any good at is Mario Party. Um, and I think that's 99% because it's luck-based. So you keep landing on the tar that takes all the stuff from everyone else, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's got nothing to do with skill whatsoever. I just like to <laughs> pretend it does when I win. Um, but apart from that, I think I, I, we've tried to do Mario Kart a bunch of times, which I love in theory, but I'm so bad at, I always end up accidentally going the opposite way to everyone else. Like, just no sense of direction whatsoever. <laughs> so to, to do so well today, I'm like, mm, this game is the game for non-gamers, yeah. guys. Well, yeah. You hear it right now. I was going to say you had an expert driver, but I'm not. That's that too. You know, what you said is much too. better. Anyone can play this. You can, Anyone can play yeah, it. Yeah, you can play it with any kind of device, and it just works. Yeah. Just works. Just. And you have the benefit as well of hearing what I sounded like when I was like seven. So. When you were seven? <laughs> yeah, like Lilith's accent is my natural accent. You, I remember you so, saying like, when we were shooting Decca about that. Yeah. 
Um, I genuinely think people think I'm joking, but that if you watch videos of me playing the Virgin Mary in my year two school play, I'm a full on Cockney. Do you also use that accent when you get people coming around to quote for stuff like bathroom thing? So I, I do a mix of two things. <laughs> Either I go I go full wide boy and lean into it. What? Um, yeah, basically, yeah, like, yeah, no, like, I, I don't, I could do the classroom myself, I don't mind, but it's just, I feel like bringing someone else in means that I don't have to waste my time on it, you know what I mean, but you've done a lovely job, lovely job, um, but, or, or I go the opposite way, um, particularly when, like, I feel like they're, they're a little bit misogynistic, I kind of lean into that, because I'm like, okay, if you're a misogynist, either I could fight it, and then you're going to get all like, Whoa, or I can play the game. So I do the whole, oh gosh, you're terribly clever. You're so clever to be able to do this. I just couldn't. I've never done any DIY in my entire life. And I just think what you do is so wonderful. And if only my husband were here, he'd be able to understand all of this nonsense. Fortunately. When in actual, yeah. yeah. But when in actual fact, I am the DIYer in our house. I have the toolkit. Like I'm very proud of my tools and I know quite a bit about DIY and fixing up houses but when you have to play the game you have to play the game I mean you know? our bathroom still needs doing I don't know what you yeah it's... <laughs> so does mine that's the one thing I won't do I will not do plumbing it, it, no it needs it needs screeding it needs the part of the walls come off it's out it had a leak and this is still, you know, this is before we were filming it still looks like that I shouldn't be so proud but <laughs> that th this is just that is how long insurance claims take that's terrible. I have to say, though, I'm quite proud. Like, after Violet and her screeding and laying people under the screed, <laughs> I've, I've now done screeding, yeah. so I now know what that's like and how sa deeply satisfying it is when you do it right. But you probably, so, you probably only laid about, like, 10 mil, would you say? I mean, Violet's got to be yeah, getting... She's got to be getting pretty good stuff that sets quick, right? Violet has, like, the world's shallowest yeah. kitchen now. Like, that's it. Like, it's yes. it's all screed. That's it. When you open the door, you've got to step up and, like, over <laughs> the screed to get there. Yeah. Brilliant. I had, we, I had a really funny Twitter, um, not conversation, but kind of back and forth the other day talking about uh, what would happen if all of my characters from the Devecki games met each other. I think someone had asked <laughs> if they'd like each other. I was like, no, they would absolutely hate each other. Fight like. Death. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Violet would hate everyone with such a huge amount of vitriol and spite. And Mariana just would have no idea. She'd just be like off dancing under the moon. <laughs> and Lilith would just be cracking those dad jokes. Like she'd just be keeping energy going. Like I think she'd she'd find Violet deeply, deeply funny. I mean, Lilith would be wearing would be wearing shoes. Whereas, that is yeah, true. Mariana yeah, wouldn't, so Violet would so be much. happy with that. So, yeah. the whole shoe thing, I don't know what, yeah. That's true, but I feel like Mariana, even though she's barefoot, she probably brings in sand with her everywhere <laughs> she goes. So I'm not sure how happy yeah. Violet would be with that. Yes, definitely. That would be true. Yeah. Well, it's been lovely having you on. It's been good, a good catching Thank up again. You so much. Um, lovely to see you and lovely to see the ladies and lovely to see the game which is looking so fantastic it's coming out for us in 10 days so uh, but for you it's probably already come out or something maybe unless something horribly wrong has happened but hopefully not so I hope you've all enjoyed the game thanks for watching us here again for this episode uh, the last one I, I keep saying it's the last one and you're like please be the last one <laughs> but yeah I think this is the last one I don't know Okay, should we get out of here? Let's go. Let's press the bell.